Building the Smart Wood Shop, day 22. This is a day of production. I'm going to cut all of the drawer bases. Remember, all of these cabinets are designed so that any drawer can fit in any of the cabinets. So it's not my favorite kind of work, it's production. It's more about setting it up once, getting it right, and then doing the same thing over and over. If you get it, I think there's 28 drawers. I'm not sure about the total number right now, but if there's 28 and I set it up wrong, I'm gonna have 28 wrong cuts, and that's a lot of wasted time and a lot of wasted material. So I get it set up right, double check things, using high quality tools like the track saw from Festool. I can get the exact cut over and over again. Checked it once, knew it was right, and then I can just start cutting through this ultralight plywood from Moreland, which I've told you lots about. Love that stuff, love the weight, love working with it, love how easy it is to cut. Now I'm gonna set up for the cross cut. I'm using the Polk cross cut jig. That's a set of plans you can pick up and build your own. This is a tool I built for cabinet making uh, when I went portable in my shop. No more big sliding table saws and I needed to have the accuracy of a high-end sliding table saw and uh, this was how I was able to do it. So I'm using my Festool track, my one of my medium-sized tracks to make the cut across. It drops into some notches on the crosscut jig and stays perfectly square. So all I have to do is set the length and I have a little stop that runs up and down and, and cranks down with a knob. Now this is the first piece. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check and make sure the ends are parallel and then I'm gonna double check by cross taping to make sure the whole thing is square. Real important, these drawers be square, otherwise they'll kind of stick when you're trying to put them in and out. After that's done and I know that uh, I've got the cut just right as far as the saw setup, now I just wanna double check the fit. Even though all these cabinets are identical in their width, I'm gonna check a couple of different locations. Want a little space in there. Sure enough, they worked. So now all I have to do is uh, just put the pieces up, butt them up to their stop, make the cut. I don't need a tape measure, I don't need a square. All I have to do is just cut, cut, cut. And I, I know because the first piece is right, I know that they all will be. Again, I designed this system for cabinetry. Cabinets have to be perfect and all the sides uh, you know, exactly right. Otherwise, start assembly with that expensive material and that would be a sad day. So here I'm just kind of speeding things up and uh, using my battery operated Festool saw with no vacuum hose, which I love, I use the bag. In fact, the only way I know the bag is full is because it starts blowing dust. This thing is so efficient at collecting dust. I think it's as good as the vacuum is, but, uh, but I don't notice it filling up until I start getting dust blowing on me. So I made a quick sample here, set up my dado, and just checking how I'm gonna build the sides with some scrap. Again, the setup is what takes time. Slow down, make the setup, make some test cuts and scrap, and then um, you know just confirm, confirm, confirm before you start making all those cuts. Uh, again, it's worth the time because you're gonna repeat it, in this case, 28 times, but when I'm building cabinets with sides, it'd be 100, 200 times then I'm gonna cut the same length of side and the same width of side. So even though this is my first piece, I'm sneaking up on it here. I had the dado set up and it does fit, but I found that I had to tap it in. This is that 12 millimeter Moreland plywood. And I had to tap it in and I thought, I don't wanna fight it. So I, I have these magnetic shims that work with any dado stack. I don't remember where I got them. They're 25 years old. But uh, I had already set it up, but I said it was a little tight. I'm not checking with a tape measure or calipers, just by feel. I know I want the dado just a little bit wider. So grab one of my thinner uh, magnetic shims, put it on. I'll double check it, but I know that's gonna be what I need. But now I have to set up the fence again, and I have to set up the, the height of the blade. And again, I'm gonna take a little piece of scrap. I know that the spacing is that 12 millimeter, so I'll just push that up next to the blade and then um, the depth of the cut is important and I had to uh, raise the blade a little bit there for changing the stack. So again, I'm cutting a piece of scrap. I'm just gonna check it all out before I start cutting my final pieces and wasting any material. You can see by the stacks behind me there, that's my fall off. I go through that 
and uh, make sure that each piece gets used uh, efficiently. So this is the first piece again, and even though I've got it all set up, I'm going to um, double check before I start making uh, the, the repetitive cuts. Nice fit, so here we go. And to be efficient, I've got the stack behind the saw, so I can just bend down, pick up a piece. If I had a rolling table, I'd probably have it there behind the saw. But I'm making the two cuts, just flipping it around, and then uh, creating a new stack because I have to cut two more cuts on the uh, front and the back, which are a different setup. So I'm uh, you know, getting 100% of this setup done so I don't have to come back to it. That's another way to have mistakes in operations when you have to come back and reset your tooling up for the same operation. Whenever possible, you know, plan your cuts and all the same cuts do at the same time. All right, so that stack with the sides is all done. It's time to change the setup on the saw. Now the blade height is fine. It's not going to change and the width of the dado stack is not going to change. But I'm going to cut the front edge is not actually a dado, it's a rabbit. So I'm going to cut it flush to the front and the back and I don't want the blade hitting my fence uh, for a couple reasons. One, it may cause the blade to um, the break. You know, this is one of those saws, the saw stop, which won't cut you. It's got this break. In fact, it's got a special break for dado blades, a big thick one that I put on. And because uh, dado blades are eight inch. And, uh, you know, so setting up this sub fence is just a piece of the 18 millimeter Moreland plywood, some scrap I had and just clamped it with a couple of my Festool clamps there. And it was uh, just not quite right. I'm going by feel. So I um, tapped it out just a little bit. And again, I'm going by feel. I'm not using a tape measure or calipers or anything. I can feel as good as a caliper can do. And I know that once I get it there, that it will be ready to go. So I like the setup. Again, the first piece, I'm going to just double check before I do it 28 times. And, you know, I'm careful with my hands here. You can see I'm pushing down because I want a, a continuous depth on that rabbit. But uh, I'm sliding my hand back as, as, you know, the hand over the top to keep it down. And then my push hand is way off to the side so I won't accidentally push into the blade. You know, there's really no way to have a saw guard on uh, when you're doing a dado, you know, or a rabbit. So you have to have that blade out there. I guess you could build a fence where you're going underneath and I could have done that with a hole down. But anyway, liked it. So now it's time for production to cut that whole stack. And uh, again, you know, I've got a system down and I'm very careful with my hands. Even though the saw won't cut me, I, you know, I don't want to uh, take any chances. You can see that stack starting to uh, dwindle there and there are the last ones going here's the last piece the last cut so now it's time to plan the next phase which will be cutting the sides all the sides are going to be the same the fronts and the backs are going to be the same length and the sides are going to be the same length the only difference I have two different heights of drawers so I'll have talls and shorts so uh, if you like following along be sure to subscribe Give me a like. Oh, and when you subscribe, ring that bell so you know when I drop a new video. Most important, share the video with others to help me grow the channel. And if you want to support the channel, you can use my Amazon link down below. And only tools that I use that you see in these videos will be there. And Amazon will share a bit with us and still give you your Amazon price. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.